Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Damani Lewis. And I'm Allison Lattice. Isaias made landfall overnight in North Carolina, and now it's moving north. Not far from the Virginia border in Birdie County, North Carolina, one person died. Three are missing, and another 20 people are hurt. After Isaias spun up a tornado, look at the debris everywhere. Homes ripped to shreds. This is Chopper video from WRAL. You can see the homes have been absolutely destroyed. There is debris scattered across the lawns into that wooded area. It's all over the place. It is. Well, in three hours, we will get an update from Governor Roy Cooper. We will carry that live here on Channel 9. This morning, Governor Cooper spoke with GMA about how the state fared overall. But all in all, this storm got in, got out pretty quickly, and, that, and that's a good sign for potential river flooding, which we hope will not be serious. So we're, uh, of course, saddened by the one fatality that we know at least that we have, but we know overall that the storm moving quickly, that the damage was not any ways as great as it could have been. All right, Isa Yes is out of here. Let's head over now to meteorologist Keith Monday tracking the storm and the calmer weather that thankfully we're seeing today. Yeah, we're getting the benefits now being on the back side of a tropical system where you get the sunshine and the drier air, but it's not the case up in the big cities in the northeast from Philadelphia to New York, just getting pummeled with tons of rainfall. I haven't seen as many tornado warnings over the last 30 to 45 minutes, so that's good. Some of the heaviest rains are starting to push further into the Appalachians now as you head further up to the Appalachians, the Adirondacks as you head further up to the north, but it still has winds of 70 miles per hour especially toward the coastline. It's forecast to move right past New York and head just west of uh, New England, the west side of New England, I should say, as we go up through a western and eastern New York toward Montreal as we head into the night tonight. So moving faster now, 35 miles per hour, meaning it's finally going to start to push out of the U.S. as we head into tonight. Here are the storm reports. There were some. We haven't had as many come in as we expected. We may fill this in more with more damage reports. A couple tornado reports south of Wilmington, and then, of course, the ones up in Birdie County that we mentioned just a moment ago with that unfortunate fatality. And then look at all these numerous tornado reports east of Richmond and D.C. and up towards Philadelphia as that storm moved on. Now back at home, we're back in the sunshine, calm. It's actually not that humid out there today. We're at 83 right now. Same up in Statesville, lower 70s in the mountains. Feels pretty good. We're about to heat things up for the rest of the week. We'll talk about the heat and eventually more of the humidity here in a few minutes. We'll see you soon, Keith. Thanks. Oak Island officials have spent hours responding to calls for water rescues and fires. They've gotten calls about people trapped inside their homes, and they've seen a lot of flooding and storm surge issues as well. Other places that felt the wrath of Isaias, Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina. And Channel 9's Dave Faraday is there live now, and Dave, the beach is now closed. Yeah, Damani, I can't even get out there. If you look behind me, you can see the row of police cars. They've actually got the main access to the island blocked right now. Some traffic backing up. The police are directing people around this area. And over here to my left, you can see some po folks have just parked their cars. They've been out here for hours waiting to get back on the island and assess all the damage. Part of that damage, I went over to the fire department earlier, and they told me that they had some huge fires last night that broke out around 11 o'clock. That was just as the hurricane was passing this area of the North Carolina coast. Take a look at some of these pictures and video that we got early this morning. Much of that damage was caused by two large fires that heavily damaged more than eight homes on the island. Some residents shared these photos of the fires that brought 20 fire departments to the island overnight. The fires broke out just as the hurricane was making landfall along this stretch of the Carolina coast. South of here, the storm surge caused coastal flooding, damaging dozens of cars in Cherry Grove. Some of those had to be towed off this morning. We were there as some of the homeowners went out and the cars just wouldn't even start. We also saw where the sea cabin pier, you might see this right here, was cut in half by the high surf overnight. Firefighters here in Ocean Isle say there was little they could do with the huge fires last night because the wind gusts were in excess of 60 miles per hour. We're, we're not waiting to find out what happened. We're waiting to put it all back together. If you've ever been through a hurricane, but if you haven't and you were stuck on that island last night, you would have been horrified. The other big concern is beach erosion. When I was down at Cherry Grove this morning, the dunes there 
above my head, but literally they were sliced in half. It's like someone took a butter knife and just cut the dunes in half. A lot of folks worried about that and what it will cost to get those beaches back in order. Back to you guys. And that is a big question out there. Isa, yes, leaving her mark. Thank you. Well, Wrightsville Beach seemed to fare a bit better, seeing mostly wind damage. Meteorologist Tony Sidiku continues our coverage from there. Yeah, conditions much calmer here on Wrightsville Beach, where the eye wall of Isai is bulldozed through here overnight with top sustained winds at 85 miles per hour, rocking our hotel room just to the south. Federal point, a wind gust of 99 miles per hour was was reported. And while we have seen significant storm surge, we have seen high water. The main impact from this storm has been the wind. We've seen reports of trees down. We've seen damage to roofs, minor damage to fences as well. Many people here waking up without power this morning. We've seen crews working to fix those as quickly as possible. But a, a lot of folks are out here enjoying the nice beach day, a little bit of surf. One man I talked to described to me what it was like to go through his first hurricane. Yeah, it kept me up on this. Was my first hurricane, so I wanted to be sure I knew what was going on around me. Uh, it was a long, bumpy night, as uh, Snoopy used to say. A little scary? Or how it was a lot scary, but uh, I understand there's been worse. But I'll tell you what, this was scary enough for me. A lot of people here on Wrightsville Beach familiar with Florence and the kind of devastation that slow moving storm brought. Thankfully, East Ice accelerated away from the coast of uh, North Carolina and did not cause a huge coastal flooding problem. So the general sense here, people are glad the storm impact wasn't much worse. Back to you. All right, Tony, thank you. Well, there is some damage and flooding in Myrtle Beach, but as you can see live from the beach here, people are already back out in the water there catching some beautiful sun rays and a little bit of uh, choppy water out there. Good for maybe bodyboarding out there. Well, another big concern for so many as Isaias approach shelters and people's health amid the coronavirus pandemic. First time for that. Governor Roy Cooper says the state's plan to keep people safe from both appear so far to be working. Uh, we knew that we needed a lot more of them because you have to have about 115 square feet per person in a shelter in order to be able to ensure social distancing along with the PPE that you need, the mask and all of that to make sure that we keep people safe. So we had to work uh, extra hard this time to make sure we had a number of shelters identified to handle all of that. Many cities and towns are only just beginning to survey the damage. Our live team coverage of Isaias continues today at 5 o'clock with both our Dave Faraday and meteorologist Tony Sidiku live along the Carolina coast.